Hey guys, today I want to discuss understanding the response object that you receive as a result of making an HTTP request. So I'm going to do a very, very quick review of the JavaScript object, and then I'm going to take that basic understanding of JavaScript objects and apply it to understanding response objects. So I have this project that I've already started here. It's just a bare Next.js project. I've got an index component, and I've got an object inside of that component called Travis. It's got a few different values on it. Basically what I wanted to go over was referencing values on an object. So we know that if we want to reference that object, we can just call on it Travis and we've referenced that object. But now if we want to reference specific properties on that object, we can do so by referencing the object's name dot the name of the property that we want to access from that object. So for us, the object name is Travis. So we do Travis dot. And then if we want to access the hobby property on that object, we can just say Travis dot hobby. And we can actually check to see if that works correctly by just logging that value to the console. So console dot log Travis dot hobby. Now when our component renders, it should just log the value of Travis.hobby to the console. So now that I've saved that, we should be able to go into the browser and when we refresh our page and the component re-renders, it should just automatically log the value of Travis.hobby to the console. And you can see here it's logged music, which is correct. So that's the basic concept of accessing properties on an object. Now we're going to take a public API, send an HTTP request to that public API, and log the response object to the console so that we can see what that object looks like. And the API that I'm gonna be using is the Punk API. It's just an API that provides endpoints so that you can make requests to a database and it gives you a list of fake beers. So here it shows us the endpoint for just getting all beers and I'm gonna implement that into my project. If you watched the Chuck Norris fact generator video, you saw that I used the Axios library to make HTTP requests. I'm gonna use that exact same library in this project. And so first I'm gonna bring it into my project by saying Axios equals require Axios. Now I have access to the Axios library. I can get rid of this object. I'm not gonna need it anymore. What I'm gonna do is create a button that triggers an HTTP request. I'm going to replace this title, which is say Beer Punk. And now I'll create a button that just says get all beers. And what I'm gonna do is provide an on-click handler to that button so that when it gets clicked, an HTTP request gets fired. And then the response object of that request is logged to the console in our project. So I can do that by saying const get beers equals the function takes in an event because the default functionality of a button is to refresh the page when you click on it and we want to cancel that out by saying event dot event default now we're going to make our get request so we'll say axios dot get and then the path that we want to send the get request to is this endpoint right here provided in their documentation and if you watch that Chuck Norris fact generator video, you know that what comes next is dot then, and then it gives us a callback function that accepts the response. And now, as I said before, all that we wanna do is log our response to the console just so that we know what the object looks like. And then if there are any errors on the request, we can say dot catch, and we get a callback function that accepts the error. And then what we wanna do is just log that error to the console. So now that I have that get beers function written, I just need to add it to my button as it's on click handler. On click equals get beers. I save that. Now I should be able to go into the browser and click on this get all beers button and receive a response object. So get all beers. Now in the console, you see that the response object has been logged. I expand it and it's got these values on it, config, data, headers, request, status, status text. So what this is, is the list of properties that exist on this object, the response object. So the same way that we had our Travis object and we said Travis dot 
whatever property we wanted. Here we can reference one of those properties by saying res.config or res.data or res.headers. Now I know from using this API that the information that I want is going to be in the data property of the response object. So here we have this large array of all of these beers and each one of those is its own object. So if we expand that first object, we see that each beer has all of these different properties on it. So there are objects nested inside of objects. And if I want to display all of those beers on the actual UI instead of logging them to the console, I can do that now if I store that array in a variable and then map through that array on my front end. And my preferred way of doing that is going to be to bring in use state from React and create a state prop that will be instantiated as an empty array, but I will update that array with the array of beers that I get from this response object. So I'll start by importing use state from React, and then I'll create my state prop. We'll call it beer list set beer list and we will set its default value to an empty array here now in the logic of my callback function from my get request instead of logging the response to the console I actually want to say set beer list and I want to set the value of beer list to response.data because I know that response.data is this array of 25 different beers. And then down here, what I want to do is map through that entire array once the list is updated. But before the list is updated, there's nothing to map over. So in order to prevent my project from breaking when the array is empty, I'm going to say if the length of beer list is greater than or equal to one, then perform this logic. If not, just return an empty string. And I'm going to accomplish that with the ternary operator. So I'll do curly braces to signify a JavaScript expression in this JSX. And I'll say beer list dot length greater than or equal to one question mark. So if beer list dot length is greater than or equal to one, whatever I tell you after this question mark, I want you to execute. And for me, what I want to do is say beer list dot map take in a beer and an index and then return a paragraph tag with beer dot name because if we look here if you expand one of the beers in this array of beers expand that object it has a name property this one's called buzz this one's called Trashy Blonde. So they all have a name property and I just want that to render on my front end. And remember when you map over an array and you're rendering an element for each item on that array, you need to provide a key. So for mine, I'm going to say the key is the index. After that, we need to say, what do we do if beer list.length is not greater than or equal to one? And the way that we do that with a ternary operator is by using a semicolon and just saying return an empty string. So my UI is not going to show anything and it's not going to attempt to map over this array because the array is not going to have any values on it. Once the array has one element or more, then this logic gets executed. But until then, it just returns an empty string. And we can see that if we save here, reload the page, there's nothing here. It's returning an empty string. But if we click on the get all beers button, it gives us the list of beers on our UI. So it's mapping through that entire array. And for each element in that array, it's returning that object dot name. That object's dot name property is getting rendered to the front end for each of those elements in the array. So that's a nice little real world use of the basic understanding of JavaScript objects. And you're likely to use it a lot if you're gonna be doing web development. This is the way that you give users access to certain data, and it's also how you dictate which pieces of that data are visible and accessible to the user. I encourage you to check out 
the API that I use in this project. It's a very fun API to use for practice, and I will provide a link for it in the description. And I will also provide the links to the documentation that will help you understand this project. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and happy coding.